Okay, so a thing sort of happened. And that thing that happened, as you see here, is that I'm no longer inside of an anaconda. I know, right? I spent all that time, which wasn't really a lot of time, but it was enough time, working on getting enough credits to buy this anaconda. I went from a Sidewinder to a Cobra to a Diamondback to a Vulture to a Python to an Anaconda. And what do you see me in right now? Aside from the fact that my favorite colors are everywhere, the red and the black. Yeah, I'm inside of a crate mock too. Well, I found that early on in this whole Distant Worlds 2 journey, the Anaconda was fantastic. It packed a punch, had a lot of build possibilities, a lot of space, a lot of oomph to it, and man was it huge. It was like driving a Cadillac. The thing was gigantic. And then I also kind of figured out, after I went out and tried to do a couple things other than exploring, that um, it was too big. It was too slow. It wasn't really my speed as much as I loved it. I loved having ship launched fighters. Oh man, that was amazing. But I like my ships how I like my cars. I like my cars fast. I like my cars mid sized. I like my cars, you know, to pack a punch, it sound kind of mean. And of course, from what you hear right here, sounds kind of mean. It is really fast. I'm rocking a crate phantom. I love the fact that I can see the points coming out the side, my hard points. Just, it's just amazing to watch, to look at, to ride, to drive. So this is the Red Dwarf. This is what I'm going to be rocking. I'm glad that I figured it out early in DW2. It allowed me a chance to come back to the bubble. It allowed me a chance to go back to my home. Great Gateway. It gave me a chance to fix what you I knew no I today. did wrong. Remember what I didn't have the engineering done right. It was the wrong ship. Especially for someone who's so early on in expeditions. Yeah, I'm, I'm a racer, not an explorer. So, before we got too far, before we got too deep, before we got too into the Distant Worlds 2 expedition, I had to come back home and make everything right. So, here we are. Crate Phantom, Ray Gateway, and I've gone from taking 180 plus jumps to doing the same distance in 101. Yeah, I could get rid of my hard points and go and get that 101 down to 97, but I want the versatility. I want to be able to do some things while I'm out there in the black. So, let's take a look at what I did in order to make this sucker so tasty. Let's look at my jump range and see what we got going. Now, I want you to understand that what I've done with this is I want to be able to do as much as possible while I'm on this thing, you know, six months or whatever. Um, if I have to shoot something, I want to be able to shoot it and enjoy that. If I have to mine something, I want to be able to mine that and enjoy it. If I'm, if I'm just exploring, I want to be able to do that and enjoy it. Um, I also don't want to have to do 189 bazillion jumps to get anywhere. Now, the first thing we're going to just take a look at is my current jump range. 
My current jump range is 57.83 light years, unladen 61.11 light years. I could actually beat that. I could be in the 60 light year uh, range as a current if I got rid of my hard points. Or if I engineered my hard points for uh, to be light, but I don't have that engineered. Next, we're going to go ahead, we're going to take a look at my loadout and the engineering that I do have. I will, be, I'm not going over a how-to on how to get those engineers because they're, I'm, I'm a noob, I've, I've done this for a month and um, getting Felicity was pretty easy, it just sort of happens. Okay, so here we are in outfitting. In outfitting, what we have going on here, as you can see, I am slightly over in terms of my uh, power usage. So I have to turn a few things off, but what I turn off aren't really necessary for any one particular task. I mean, they're very situational. So I just turn them on when I need them. So first we have the hard points um, and the two large uh, hard points. I got two, two multi cannons. Um, they didn't have a 3C that was turreted. I wanted, I wanted at least to have one turreted something for any passengers to use. So I, I wanted to have a turreted weapon and I wanted to have the mining laser be turreted because if I decide to punish someone and bore them with mining, they could sit there and do the mining with the laser. Uh, otherwise, everything else is gimbaled because I'm not an aiming crack shot. Uh, I'm actually more into the speed. It would be really awesome if they had some kind of racing mode in this game or something, or like a racetrack outside of the canyons. And the utility mounts. Um, none of these have been engineered. And I have my frame shift wake scanner because that is good for, well, wake scanning, getting materials. Because I know that once I get back, I'm going to want to do all of the engineers and all of the this and all of the that. So I want to be sure that I have the things that I might not see while we're out there, such as the frame shift wake scanner, a kill warrant scanner, just in case I want to do some cop surfing. I don't plan on being out there doing anything crazy, but cop surfing is fun. Um, I have done some scenarios and the scenarios were fun. So I want to be, I want to make sure that I can shoot things and you know, whatever. Heat sink launcher because it's a necessity and a chaff launcher because you never know. Um, I'm participating in Distant Worlds 2 as media, uh, the media core. So uh, some things are in open, some things are in private, some things are in squadron. So I'm going to be hopping in between all of those things. And while I don't intend to stop and fight anyone because this is not a, a, a build for, for that. Um, at least from what I've seen. It's not a build for that. I would like to be able to survive. And a chaff launcher can help. Along with the speed of this sucker. Jeez, it's fast. Now onto the core internals. We're keeping the lightweight alloys for the bulkheads, but I went with a 6D power plant, and that 6D power plant has been engineered. Um, and it's been engineered with overcharge. So that way, it actually gives me a power capacity of 21.17. What I absolutely need, or what I would be normally rolling in, is a 7D power plant, which still doesn't give me exactly enough power. But then once I supercharge it or overcharge it or whatever, once I overcharge it, it gives me the 25 megawatts I need. This gives me the 21. Okay, that's not that great. But I, I, I wanted the extra, I wanted the extra light year boost. I, I, I this is a long trip. <laughs> and my first go around was insane. It was 180 something jumps. That's crazy. So yeah, that's what I did with the power plant with, with 6D, which be for the lightness engineered in order to, you know, pick up the power so that way I don't have to run a shit box. Um, my thrusters, I mean, 60 thrusters, why not? And yes, those thrusters have been uh, modified. And it's been modified with uh, thermal spread and dirty drive tuning. 
So this will help with the heat and dirty drive tuning is, um, well, as you see there, I get higher optimal multiplier and um, it outputs pretty, pretty decent in terms of the uh, my thruster ability. Uh, the frame shift drive, I can only use a five. So I got a 5A and I took that 5A and that's definitely been engineered. And I've engineered that to increased FSD range. That's a full grade five FSD frame shift drive along with the mass manager. Uh, mass manager, yeah, helpful. It, it, it gave me a, it, it gave me something. Uh, 4D life support. You know, th there wasn't a uh, there wasn't an engineering thing with Felicity that was going to help me out very much with that. So I didn't bother deal with. Uh, any kind of life support modifications, except for making sure that it was a D. Uh, my power distributor, I wanted to make sure that I could boost at least twice in short succession. Um, I was, I did this with a 5D and the 5D was fine. Actually, there was nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. But then I looked at a 4D and I wanted to see if I could get away with it. So I popped a 4D power distributor in here. I'm playing with it now. Um, I might go back to the 5, but so far I haven't had any problems um, in terms of boosting. I'm boosting as fast as I was with 5, except it's just not two in a, in a single stack. It's more or less uh, 1 and 2 back to back, but it's actually boosting itself up pretty quickly so uh, that's what it's doing and that's how that's how I'm enjoying it 6d sensors of course I have the sensors modified to be lightweight for the scanners lightweight anything wherever you can save weight save the weight and 5c fuel tank uh, 32 why because it's 32 freaking cells of fuel that's why <laughs> optional internals so I went with the biggest fuel scoop I could get so I sacrificed my 6B slot because on the Anaconda I got really used to coming to a star and before getting to even be able to aim at my next jump point being full having my, having my fuel on full all the time when doing the guardian thing, because as you see, there's a guardian thing there. When doing the guardian thing, I built a uh, diamondback explorer, and I was able to get that sucker up to like 45 light years with absolutely nothing done to it. And I went and I took that because uh, when I did the guardian thing the first time, or tried to, I tried to do it with this crate, and the crate's too big. It's just too big. I couldn't land anywhere. When I did land somewhere. It was on uh, it was on like the side of a mountain sloping down and then i died in the srv at the very last minute which popped me back into the ship but my ship had taken off and it was already in orbit so i was not doing that again but i actually came back out to ray gateway built a diamondback explorer and went out with that it was a shit box but it was awesome it did its job and it did its job very well i went with a smaller fuel scoop I think the only one I could put on was like a four or a three or something like that and it was terrible so I realized now I've been spoiled by the 6B, 6B fuel scoop I have to have it the 5H Guardian frame shift drive booster I'm sacrificing a five slot for this because that is 10.5 10.5 10 extra light years 10.5 from the Guardian module. I started the Guardian thing during the live stream and I couldn't find a place to park during the live stream. I found the place to park afterwards and then everything I just said happened and that sucked. But I went back out with a Diamondback Explorer and as you see, I was able to get what I needed in order to have the frame shift drive booster. Um, I have a 4G, 4G planetary vehicle hangar with two SRV bays because I can do multi-crew and I do have friends, in theory. A 5D shield generator because it was a 6D shield generator, um, but I'm, I'm on an exploration mission. It's not that big. It's not that big of a deal. I just need to make sure that I've got some shields for some high G planets. 
And that should be good. That 5D should be fine. I think there's an engineer for this. I don't have that engineer unlocked. Uh, I have a 3D refinery. I got a refinery because if I'm going to be mining stuff, it's going to be useful. But at the same time, I don't have a cargo bay now. Um, and I don't have a cargo bay because I'm bringing with me a auto field maintenance unit, a standard docking computer, and my detailed surface scanner, which has been modified, but it's not modified for weight or anything. It's just modified so that way the probe scanning is, the radius is bigger. Felicity helped me out a lot, as you see, and the regular planetary approach suite. And that is it. That's what I got going on there. And with that, I am getting 61.11 light years max. Currently doing 57.83 light years with the minimum, uh, uh, with a jump min of 57.85. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for like, you know, a noob that just started in, just started in January and has no idea what he's doing. I think that's pretty good. And if we just take a look at how many hops this is going to take for me to get back to Omega. And I'm glad that I did this during the first jump because I, I should say I'm glad that I went out and I realized that that I wasn't going to be happy with the Anaconda on this six month trip. I'm glad I figured that out. I'm glad I figured that out before it was too late. Anyhow. I've gone from 180 something jumps from here to Omega to 101 jumps. That is massive. That is absolutely massive. That's a couple of hours right there. I mean, that's absolutely, I mean, a couple of hours saved. That's absolutely massive. I think um, just doing the absolute, like uh, coming back, coming back, because I was actually, I was like 7,000 light years away when I came back and that was 190 something jumps and or yeah 190 something jumps from where I was and by the time I got back here I swear and I was and I know that I know that Omega is only like 5,500 but I had gone to another spot that was another 2,000 away anyhow coming back from that spot that easily took six hours. I don't, I mean, I, I, and mind you, you know, farting around, hitting the, you know, honking the horn and, you know, seeing if there was anything worth scanning or whatever. But that took so long. Getting to Omega took so long that I didn't even want to stop at any of the places in between. That's why I stopped at Thor's Eye. And then from Thor's eye, I, I jumped to the other, you know, from Thor's eye, I jumped to the super cluster and whatever else from Thor's eye. I didn't stop at the view or anything else because it was, I was like, I, I don't have that kind of time. What, this is crazy. Coming back, I, it, was, it was nuts. I'm glad I'm an insomniac. Um, but yeah, that's what I got right now. 101 jumps to Omega. That's the first waypoint. So that's nothing to that's nothing to do um, and if I really want to push it because I know people are going to ask let's just store my hard points you have stored a 3c guy involved multi cannon and we're gonna keep the mining laser um, click I mean I'm thinking I'll go without the um, because eventually we'll be, I, I won't be near any stations and I won't need the docking computer, but, um, you have stored a two F turret. I don't know. I'm, I'm lazy and, and docking is always so stressful. I could do it, but it's so stressful because you know that something's going to shoot at you if you don't do it right. You have stored a two F guy involved pulse laser. So if I got rid of all of my weapons but kept the mining laser, I'm looking at 59.71 uh, light years. Come on, you guys, you're killing me, Smalls. 
Store the mining laser. You have stored a 2D turreted mining laser. Does that get me to 60? 59.96 light years as my current jump. So if I had no hard points at all and just decided to take my chances and you know, like, you know, if I have to mine something that, you know, that's needed to synthesize, just deal with the fact that I can't, I could be doing, I could be doing like 60 light year jumps. Um, let's go on ahead and just, uh, because if I'm, if I'm not going to do any of that, right, let's go on ahead, put that away. You have stored a zero V kill warrant scanner. Go to the optionals. I mean, the refinery doesn't really weigh anything. Uh, rid of the refinery. You have stored a 3D refinery. Which will allow me to put something else in there, but what am I going to put in there if I'm not refining anything? Well, I mean, I, I could go ahead and put car, a cargo rack in there. And yeah, my balance is only six million because I have to sell a couple of a couple of ships, <laughs> and those couple of ships were not ships I was taking seriously. They were ships I was just testing out. You have purchased a three D cargo okay, rack so for eight thousand nine hundred and seventy nine credits. If I need it, and I get to keep my docking. And if I do that, I'm at 60.12. 60.12. That is my jump minimum being 59.16 light years. So that is the build that I'm running with, with the exception of the hard points. I'm putting those back because I want to be able to do stuff. Um, but on, I guess on minimal engineering, because it's only the one engineer. Felicity Farseer on minimal engineering with the FSD booster from the Guardians and just making sure that I'm running D rated stuff on on a crate phantom. Looking at my top speed is 334, boost speed 467, so I can outrun, I can I can outrun a lot of things. I'm not worried about that. Um my power draw is all fine. With that power plant that's there i'm not overdrawing any power if i go with this purely exploration build but we know that i'm not doing that <laughs> but given that i'm not doing that i mean the only thing i really have to decide is whether or not i'm keeping the mining stuff or not i mean i might put in a repair limpet instead who knows um because i can synthesize limpets so yeah that's the build that I'm going that I'm running for Distant Worlds 2 right here in Elite Dangerous. I live stream on Twitch Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5 p.m. And those are mostly live streamed in VR. Uh, those live streams are basically going to be covering the Distant Worlds 2 expedition. And anytime I'm capturing video, uh, I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride of me capturing video. Kind of a behind the scenes of how I do the YouTube videos. Otherwise, go on ahead, like this video, share this video, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch. The link to my Twitch is in the description below. I'm actually on Twitch a lot more than I'm on YouTube. So if you go on over to Twitch, that's where you can catch my live streams and that's where you're most likely to be able to interact with me. So you can go to Twitch, hit that follow button over there as well. If you hit the sub button, people who hit the sub button during the live stream, first person to do it during that live stream, gets their name on the dashboard. What do I mean by the name on the dashboard? Lord, here we go. This is what I mean. Those will be replaced with your name, and if your name is more than 10 characters, I'm gonna have to shorten it. But that's where it goes if you sub, and that's where the first sub of the live streams their little name put there and it stays there until I get to the it stays there until I get to the next station that can change it so some lucky person is going to be the last name that I can change 
for months. Um, because we're going to be out in the deeps of space and there will be nothing. So, I hope you guys are going uh, to participate in the Distant Worlds event. It seems to be a lot of fun so far. I've had some good conversations. I've met some nice people. I can't wait to get back in it. Uh, you know, having to come out here, I've been out of Omega for like three days now. I did all of this in the course of a few, uh, like three days. The engineering was pretty much pretty much done within the first day. The only reason why I did more engineering today was for the experimentals. I had gotten a bunch of extra mats while I was out trying to find some stuff, and I, I was able to put the experimentals on there. So what are you guys taking to DW2? What do you do? What do you like for uh, exploration? What I see with this crate is that when I come back, I'll be able to build this for something completely different have a completely different experience altogether. I do want to create Mach 2 only for the ship launch fighters as, you know, as something fun. But I like this. It's stylish. It looks good. I hate the interior of the Mach 2. I just hate it. Um, but this is this is what I'm rocking. That's the potential of it if I have no horror points. Yeah, that's pretty badass right there. So until the next time, I will catch you guys in the black.